How to use the Firefox browser part 2 file edit and view menus file menu this menu and menus for most programs today list commands on the left side and lists keyboard shortcuts for those commands on the right side keyboard shortcuts can be used without opening the menu they are on if you use many shortcuts, I suggest you make a list and stick it on the wall by your computer. The new tab and new window commands allow you to open more than one web page in the Firefox browser, and there are many other ways to open new tabs or new windows. I suggest you try all the ones described below and concentrate on remembering those you find easier to use. When you open web pages as tabs, the names appear on the second line of your browser page and you can switch back and forth between the tabs very quickly just by clicking their names. But you can only see one page at a time. When you open additional web pages as a new window, you can move each window around the desktop and resize it so that you can see all the windows at the same time and you can independently scroll them to compare web pages. The simplest way to open a new tab is to drag a shortcut from the currently open web page from your favorites toolbar or from your desktop to the second line of the browser page to the right of one of the tabs that's there already. New page is, is the only tab open. I'll drag the Dow shortcut to the right of it. Now it has opened as another tab. I'll drag Phantom from my favorites toolbar. Now it has opened as another new tab and I have three tabs open. You can switch back and forth between them as we said very quickly but you can again only see one at a time. A warning Never drag a desktop shortcut created from the Internet Explorer browser onto another browser's window. This may cause your computer to start looping. That is very difficult to stop and you may have to restart your computer. I'm going to close the tabs I have now by clicking the X's. You can also right click a shortcut on the open web page and select open link in new tab. And that has opened another tab. One additional way to do that if you want to search the internet for a web page to open as a new tab, you can either click this plus sign here or you can select new tab from the file menu. Either one of those pulls up a search screen. You then search for and click a link to open a website in this new tab position as an additional new tab. You can change the order of open tabs by dragging them back and forth. And as we said earlier, you can close any of the tabs by clicking that X. To open a new window, drag a tab name off your browser window onto the desktop. Now you have an independent window that you can move around, resize, reposition so you can see both windows at the same time. You can close it as you close all windows by clicking the Xbox in the corner. Lastly, if you have your Firefox browser pinned to your taskbar, as I strongly recommend, and that's described in another tutorial, you can right click the icon on the taskbar taskbar and select Firefox to open a new window. 
you're not going to be able to see the icon because it's just below the edge of the uh, window that I'm recording. Ah, but you can see the pop-up. If you right-click the icon, you get a list of uh, things to check, and one of them is Firefox. If you click that, you will open another Firefox window. And, of course, it opens to my home page, like all my Firefox windows do. Let's look at the, let's go back to my home page. Let's get rid of this new tab. The next command on the file menu is the new private window command. All that does is it opens a new window in the browser, but it does not record that new window's address in the browsing history. That's a new private window. Open file. I'll demonstrate it part way. And I'll reposition the uh, browser window. The open file command lets you browse your computer to find a web page that you have stored on your computer. It's not on the internet, it's stored in your computer. And it lets you open that in the browser. Web pages stored in your computer are typically either .htm files or .html files. If you created your own web page that you uploaded to the internet, for instance, you would probably have a copy of that web page on your computer and you could open that copy with that open file command. I'm not going to open another web page. Looks just like a regular browser page, except it's coming from your computer, it's not coming from the internet. Save page as uh, lets you save the currently open web page in your computer. You will usually find that that command will give you a, a saved file in a format that's not very useful. There are specialized uh, programs to let you save web pages in formats that are useful. Browsers don't usually let you do that. Email link creates an email from you to whoever you'd like to send it to. It gives the title of the web page that was open when you clicked that send email uh, command. And it also has the address of that web page embedded in the email. And you're free to type your own message in addition to that. Someone receiving that email can click that line to open that web page. The next three commands on the file menu Page setup, print preview, and print are the standard print commands that most programs provide you with. They let you do things like uh, say whether you want the, the page printed in landscape or portrait format, let you select the printer, let you select how many copies you want printed, and things like that. And then the exit command at the bottom will close the browser window. A word on printing a browser page. You can click this, this and make the appropriate uh, selections from the uh, options and print a web page. However, if the web page has a print button on it in the text of the, of the page, that will generally format the page in a way that will give you a much better printout. The Edit menu. There are only three commands on this menu that will work on a web page. They are the copy, select all, and find commands. But since the other commands are widely used in many programs, I'll describe them also. The undo command, and you may have trouble reading it, will reverse the last command you entered. The undo command, or control Z, will reverse the last editing command you typed. The redo command will undo the undo, if you will pardon the expression. The cut command, you highlight text and then cut it. That will remove the text from where it is and place it on the clipboard. Copy command is similar, except that it will put the text on the clipboard that's highlighted, but it will not remove it from where it is also. The paste command will insert the cut or copied text 
wherever the cursor is when you do the paste command. The delete command will delete selected text. The select all command will select all the text on the current web page. And the find command will locate a word or words on the current web page. On a web page, the only commands that you really can use are copy, select all, and find because you can't change somebody else's web page. The view menu has several important features. View toolbars lists the toolbars that are available for displaying on your browser window. The first one is the menu bar, which I recommend you always display. You can check it to display it and uncheck it to hide it. The bookmarks toolbar, it's also called the favorites toolbar in some browsers. That's this line right here where you put your frequently used sh web shortcuts. The next two toolbars are from add-ons that I have installed in my Firefox browser. The Ant Video Downloader is a program that will capture a playing video. The Norton toolbar is from my security program. You can show or hide those. Here they are. This is the downloader toolbar. When you play a video from a website, the word download becomes bold. If you then click it, it will save that video in your computer. The Norton toolbar is from the security program, as I said. In particular, it has the vault open button on it. The vault fills in passwords. When you visit a website that has a password that you have visited before and provided a password. So the next time you visit it, you visit the website, it fills in the passwords and all you do is click open or go or whatever it is. That's all of the uh, toolbars. Then the sidebar will show a bookmarks list or a history list on the side of the open browser window. It does take up a lot of space, so I don't usually use that feature. The zoom will increase or decrease the text size on the current page. It's easier just to use Control plus and Control minus to make the uh, text larger or smaller. If you have zoomed it, either in or out, and you click reset, it will reset the text size to the size specified as one of the options in the contents tab for the options that we will describe later. If you check zoom text only, when you zoom a web page, it will not change the size of the pictures that are on the web page. If you leave that unchecked, pictures will zoom in or out as the text changes size. Page style I don't really use. The full screen option is fairly useful. F11 is the shortcut for it, and I'll demonstrate it now. Notice there's all these lines in the browser window that are above the web page, which cuts way down on how much content you're seeing on your browser page. You can make all of these lines go away and make the text of the web page in enlarge to it completely fill your desktop. All you do is either check full screen or press F11 and I'll demonstrate it by pressing F11. Now we're looking at the bottom quarter of the desktop so I'm going to press F11. I know you can only see a tiny part of it but what has happened is the all the lines at the top of the browser page went away and the, and the web page fills the entire screen. If you want to bring it back to the way it was, press F11 again and that restores it to the size the window had before you pressed F11. That's a very useful feature when you're looking at a complicated website. Because as I have said before, I like to show all the optional lines here because they make it much easier to use the Firefox browser.